English or politics or classical studies, something like that. Something in the arts is what I want to do. Mine's kind of like a toss-up right now between law school and possibly becoming like a social worker. Something of that aspect is really just like helping people. I want to go to Ottawa next year to go to Carleton for journalism. I left China when I was five. I'm very lucky to actually grow up in an education system like in Canada. If you can't get an education, then there's so much that you're missing out on. And you miss out on seeing what kind of opportunities are out there for you, so you don't really even get a chance. If you don't go to university, it seems like you won't get a job that will get you anywhere in life. I can't even imagine myself being in a place where there was war. All I think about is war, the war on terror, like, I think of our Canadian troops there, and that's about it. Like, we don't really get to see the real Afghanistan. Explosions, child soldiers, just people dying like nothing, nothing good at all. War, poverty, death, nothing, honestly nothing really positive. Um, nothing that I would like to sort of be a part of. You have to think maybe, is there a better way to be solving it? Many see Afghanistan as a country full of conflict and not much else. What Western eyes get little opportunity to see is the everyday or real-life Afghanistan that lies outside of war. We often forget that in countries of conflict there are children, mothers, fathers and families who are simply trying to live their lives. While I was working in a uh, refugees camp in the uh, border of Pakistan and Afghanistan, I met so many children. Between uh, the Russian invasion and occupation and then the civil wars that followed and then the, the rule of the Taliban, the people there had a very little opportunity and hope. Many schools were destroyed. Books and teaching materials were burned and most of the teachers fled to other countries. One child particularly impacted me because he came to, he heard the foreigner is in the clinic I was working with, and um, he came to me and he said, can he come and practice his English with me? Because he just started some classes. And um, one day he came in and uh, he heard I was not feeling well and I'm not coming to the clinic. On Wednesday when I came back, I saw this child was waiting inside the clinic with a tray. And the tray, there was a glass of milk, uh, some cheese and bread and it brought tears to my eyes because that was the food for himself and his sister and brother but he brought it to me because he wanted to uh, come and just talk to me and that was the most impacting um, and heartbreaking and heartwarming story I ever uh, me experienced. When I met these children, when they go back to Afghanistan, what's going to happen to them? Jalalabad is a very conservative culture um, where the women um, tend not to go outside the home very much. If they are outside the home, they wear burqas. This is not government imposed, this is culturally imposed by a lot of peer group pressure. Formal education was forbidden for girls, while the curriculum for boys was highly dominated by religious studies. Very little educational opportunities in a closed society. Tents, huts and open air are most classroom settings. Lessons are held under trees or on verandas. Children travel for miles to attend classes with no chairs or tables. Students get sick easily from exposure to extreme weather. Epidemic diseases spread quickly. They are saying they never be interested to come to school because it's not like a school. Sitting under the tree and constant rain during the uh, winter and the heat during the summer. 
Lack of playgrounds and strong discipline cause many students to leave school each year. But Afghanistan is changing. They are desperately, desperately need your, need, your help. And education is their best chance, really, to, to get out of that uh, conflict. Am I a part of something more? I want to We'll have the world get closer as I go. Teach me how to live and take it home. Freedom's what I feel. Besides all the facts and the war and the politics, it's not about that, it's about her and about the children over there. So that's how it started. She was the inspiration of the song. It was based on her look. Just the glance that she had, it was kind of mysterious. It was, she, she was curious, um, maybe a little skeptical. Like, you know, who's looking back at me? First of all, why are they taking this footage? And um, yeah, and, and why should, why does it matter? You know, and who's going to see it? Freedom's what I feel. After September 11, I saw the uh, image of the mother and child uh, Afghans, which were running through the rubbles, and they were the inspiration. I had approached my Rotary Club and um, requested that I will go to the refugees camp. The condition of the camps were extremely uh, bad. And yet when you meet the people there, you realize they're people that share the same dreams and aspirations that we have, and I want to see what we can do to help them realize these dreams and aspirations. Is there any form of schools around there? Right now, uh, most of the time they're sitting outside under the trees going to school. When it rains hard, they don't go to school at all. When Canadian Rotarians learned about the hundreds of students in Nangarhar province, sitting on the hard ground, exposed to extreme weather, just for their chance to learn, it was obvious they had to do something. When they saw the faces of survival amidst the ruins of war, there was little left to discuss. They knew they had to help. Building a school in Afghanistan would be their next project. They would build and furnish a school for these children to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Rotary in Canada. It would affect and improve the lives of thousands of Afghan students from grade 1 to grade 12, who would attend each year and thousands more in every year to come. The plan to build the school started in December 2008. On January 13, 2010, construction began. Out in the school while it's under construction and you see the kids still sitting under the trees um, getting their education with their teacher with a chalkboard propped up against a tree and meanwhile the kids are somewhat distracted watching this beautiful building go up. It's, uh, um, they, have, they have big smiles on their faces and when you show up there um, they, they tend to surround you and want to thank you for, for the work that's being done. Very little heavy machinery or modern tools were used. The school was built mostly by hand. It was finished six months ahead of schedule. Canadian Rotarians raised half the money to build and furnish the school. CEDA, the Canadian International Development Agency, matched their donations. The newly built two-story school opens up a whole new life for this community. Not only does it provide shelter and comfort in its 20 classrooms, it provides employment to teachers and administration staff. 
Toilets and fresh water were late additions to the plan, things we could never imagine not having. The school accommodates 4,000 girls and boys. The girls attend in the early morning and the boys in the afternoon. The teachers are motivated and excited to teach. The children are proud and eager to learn. The students can now dream of becoming teachers and doctors protected from the conflict outside their doorstep. The elders from the community have expressed their heartfelt appreciation many times to Canadians for this generous gift. Their children will never forget who helped them sit inside their own classrooms instead of on the ground, under trees, and exposed to extreme weather. Again, I'm pleased to present members of the Rotary Clubs in Canada and in United States as we open this new educational facility. And this school is tangible evidence of Rotarian in Canada and United States extending the hand of friendship. Am I a part of something more? Is it a dream? To want to see outside the things I've seen. So open up the walls that stand between and hear me. Cause freedom's what I feel. Freedom's what I feel. We saw hundreds of girls lined up outside the door, hundreds of boys coming in with smiles on their faces, um, realizing that we had just changed their lives. I traveled around the world. I never seen the children so grateful than Afghan children. I never seen. I mean, the smallest things you do for if you will take a step for them, they took two steps. And that's the way they show their gratitude. Well, one thing has led to another, and we've probably been involved in 20 or 25 different projects there over this period of time. We've been so well received by the Afghan people. Uh, they say, show us the way, don't just do things for us, that it's kind of an irresistible uh, circumstance where you just want to continue to help these people. We gave them actually uh, $150 as a small grant, and we asked them to go and find a project and do it in their community or in their school. And here is the kids from 8th grade to 12th grade. They never ever did anything volunteer. They have no concept of volunteerism. They got together with $150. They have done so many things in their own classroom, in their own community, like building a water tank. Um, repairing their chairs in their schools, painting their classrooms. We have no idea how blessed we are. I've seen these children are having so little and they are at the same time they are happy with uh, receiving a pencil. I think uh, what the Canadian Rotarians have done is offered a tremendous opportunity to open up communication between Canadian youth and the uh, students in uh, Afghanistan. Get in touch with these children. They worth communicating. They need ideas. They need to know about other cultures. And they are extremely intelligent. Just get in touch with them. Just supporting them. That's what they need. Are you a part of something more? 
Are you a part of something more? Now, like, I guess to see the kids laughing and things it just shows a big sense of unity that I never thought would have existed in such a place. A lot of happiness and love and kids having fun. Like, it wasn't anything at all what I thought it would be. Like, something like a school can bring them all together and make them happy that everything bad kind of it goes away, it disappears. I just think it's like a miracle that somebody's just coming in to build a school for them, which is great. Fantastic. They're already excited that they don't have to like study on the floor and like they don't when it rains they can still go to class. Like just like such like a small like little change in their lives made such a difference. Are you a part of something more? We're like worlds apart from them. And in order, if we're gonna stay world apart, then we might as well just send money. And I mean, building a school is a good start, but in order to progress from that, we actually need to take it to the next step. I think there's more to building a school than just building the structure. Like, I want to know more about it, and it made me want to be able to do something about it. Because we are the future. We need to be able to understand that we need to take the proper steps. We can't leave it up to people that are older than us. This whole, um, initiative is geared towards getting young people involved in it and that wouldn't be able to happen unless teenagers and young people actually cared about what's going on in the world and it's important that we do care. It enriches your own life if you have kind of like a purpose and something to work towards and you want to help other people and we need to understand about other cultures in order to maybe like even improve our own. So. Makes you feel special, like that they think you are the ones that are capable of making the change and causing a difference, right? So, I mean, yeah, it's a good feeling that they chose us. So it's really important that like the government comes to us and gives us opportunities. Because it's hard for us to just kind of be like, oh, we're going to start fundraising for Afghanistan, but like we need a purpose and a goal, and we need people to guide us to get there. We are going to go back to social justice and the club and everybody that's in it, and tell them and let them be aware and. Hopefully with that, it'll continue over the years and it'll just sort of become a permanent part of social justice. I mean, that's the whole point. Am I a part of something more? Is it a dream? To want to see outside the We are really privileged to have the education that we have here. And I just thought it was really nice to see them like finally getting to experience that a little bit. And it's just it's so shocking to see how excited they are about a building that's much smaller and much more people going to it. And it just puts everything into perspective for us because we're absolutely spoiled. <laughs> it just like it really like affects you. Like a hand I wanna hold. our lives we don't really think about other people but it's not our fault really I don't think it's just that we're not really handed like we're not given the opportunity so I think it's really good that we are are you a part of something more we are the future and we have to be able to make changes when we get into power and grow up Hi, my name is Zarifa. I'm uh, 14 years old. And what do you want to be when you grow up, Zarifa? Yeah. I want to be a um, reporter. A reporter. Okay. Yeah. yeah.
There's more I wanna know.